in order to prove Liouville's theorem, which says that if a complex function is bounded and entire, it must be constant. We first need to take a step back and talk about a very important concept in mathematics, used throughout many fields, such as differential geometry, complex analysis, topology, classical geometry, and others. I'm talking about the winding number. It all starts with a question. What is the winding number of a closed curve around a point on the complex plane? Intuitively, the winding number is an integer that represents how many times a curve travels counterclockwise around a point. The first example is the one in which the winding number is positive. So imagine this curve, for example. We can see that if we pass through this point Z0, a line, in any direction, at the points of intersection between this line and our closed curve gamma, we can count the direction of each flow. So in this case, we would have two counterclockwise, or one plus one. Second example, winding number equals to zero. So the net circulation is zero around this point. So using the same strategy as before, we trace this line from the point Z0 and we see the intersection points. In this case, one of them flows counterclockwise and the other clockwise. So that the winding number is gonna be plus one minus one. The third example, when the winding number is negative. In this case here, if we do the same thing as before and we count each one of the crossings, we're gonna find plus one, minus one, minus one. More generally, the winding number can be calculated using this formula. So one over two pi times the line integral over this closed curve gamma of d theta. And z zero is our point of interest here. And theta is the angle around z zero. If gamma of t is a parametrization of the curve gamma, where t ranges from zero to one, then theta of t represents the angle that the vector from z zero to gamma of t makes with the positive real axis. As gamma of t moves along the curve, theta of t increases or decreases, depending on whether the curve is moving counterclockwise or clockwise around z zero. The total change of theta as the curve completes one full traversal is two pi times the winding number. And that's why this integral, when normalized by one over two pi, always result in an integer number. Now let's describe the winding number in terms of points on the complex plane, rather than using angles. Let's z equals x plus i y be a point on this plane. We can also write it in polar coordinates, where r is its distance from the origin and theta is the angle formed between the position vector and the x-axis. Now, differentiating it, we get this. dz equals e to the power of i theta dr plus i r e to the power of i theta d theta. Dividing everything by z and using polar coordinates, we find out that dz over z is dr over r plus i d theta. The first term is just d of ln of r, which is zero for a closed curve. And the second term remains the same. So we found out that dz over z is i d theta. But wait a second, why is it true that d ln of r is zero in a closed curve? We can see this by the following. ln of a point z, when written in polar coordinates, is this. Now, we can use the property of logarithm to break this into two different logarithms. The second term is just i theta. And this implies that we found out that ln of r is i theta minus ln of z. So, differentiating now, we would get dr over r. And when gamma is a closed curve, and we take the line integral over this closed curve of d ln of r, it is the same thing as taking this integral of dr over r. And since r returns to its original value after traversing the closed curve, the net change in ln of r is zero. Okay, so I hope you're convinced now. dz over z equals i d theta. Actually, this equation is valid only when our point of interest is z zero equals zero or the origin. A more general version would require us to shift it. So from z to z minus z zero. Now, doing this shift, we have that d z minus z zero over z minus z zero is i d theta, which will take us in the end to d theta equals d z over i times z minus z zero. And therefore the winding number can be written as one over two pi i times the integral over this closed curve of d z over z minus z zero. Now, without loss of generality, in other words, to not overcomplicate things in an unnecessary way, let's assume the winding number of our curve is one. So it's just a simple loop that goes around our point Z0 just once. 
and that is oriented in the counterclockwise direction. In this particular case, we have this. 1 equals 1 over 2 pi i times the line integral over this closed curve of dz over z minus z0. In order to achieve our ultimate goal here, which is to prove Liouville's theorem, we need another very important result in complex analysis, which is called Cauchy's integral formula. Well, let's find this formula. Consider the holomorphic function g of z as f of z minus f of z0 over z minus z0. Then we can integrate it over this closed curve. Since g is holomorphic, its integral over this closed curve must be zero. This is called Cauchy's integral theorem in complex analysis. Let me know in the comment section if you guys would like me to make a video proving it. It is a very standard result in complex analysis. Intuitively, you can think about it this way. This equation holds true because in the complex plane, Holomorphic functions have no net circulation around closed orbits. This means that any contributions to the integral from one part of the curve are exactly cancelled out by contributions from other parts of the curve. Essentially, holomorphic functions are smooth and have no singularities within the path. So the values of the function balance out perfectly over the entire closed curve. So now we can write the following. This integral is zero. Then we can open the two terms here into two different integrals that subtract each other, which is the same thing as writing one term equals the other. And since the winding number is one in this case, we have that this integral over gamma of d zero over z minus z zero is two pi i, which implies that f of z zero is just one over two pi i times the integral over gamma of f of z over z minus z zero dz. And that's Cauchy's integral formula. From it, we can easily derive Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives. Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives comes this way. We take this f of z0 and we differentiate it with respect to z0. We put the derivative inside of the integral and use Leibniz's rule. As a consequence, we'll get that this derivative is just 1 over 2 pi i times the integral over gamma of f of z over z minus z0 squared dz. And that's the formula we were looking for. The next step is to use this formula to deduce the fact that the absolute value of the derivative of f of z0 is bounded. A quick reminder, our ultimate goal here is to prove Liouville's theorem, which says that if f is bounded and entire, then it must be constant. So remember, f is assumed to be bounded here. Therefore, we can say that there exists m positive, a real number, such that the module of f of z is less or equal than m for any z in the complex plane. So from Cauchy's integral formula for the derivative, we can take the absolute value in both sides and see that the absolute value of i is going to be 1, and the absolute value of this integral is less or equal than the following, just using triangle inequality. We notice that the module of f of z is less or equal than m, as we just said. So this is going to be less or equal than m over 2 pi r squared of the integral of the module of dz. So the absolute value of the derivative of f of z0 is less or equal than m over 2 pi r squared integral over gamma of dz in module. In this case here, r is just a finite distance in the complex plane, such that this inequality is valid. Can you tell why I'm allowed to do that? Let me know in the comments section your thoughts about it which is less than the same constant times 2 pi r. And this is true since this term is just the perimeter of gamma, which I assume to be completely within a circle of radius r and centered in z0. And thus, I can write this. So this module is smaller or equal than m over r for a fixed m positive and for any r positive, large enough. The final step is to make r tend to infinity, which makes the fraction m over r to go to zero, and therefore this module must be less or equal than zero. So it is zero. And therefore we found that the derivative of f of z zero with respect to z zero is zero for any z zero in the complex plane. In other words, f is constant. And that's the proof of Liouville's theorem. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have any suggestions of proofs you would like to see here in the channel. I welcome any suggestion, even about the format, anything. Just let me know. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And see you guys next time.